CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. Good evening, I'm Andrew Johnson. Hudson Mack is off tonight. We begin with the battle that is brewing between the premiers of Alberta and B.C. And it's a war of words that could end up killing the Northern Gateway Project. At stake is billions of dollars in revenue. And Premier Christy Clark says she's not prepared to support the pipeline unless B.C. gets a bigger slice of it. As CTV's Stephen Andrew shows us, Alberta is standing firm, flatly rejecting any sort of profit sharing. The proposed Enbridge oil pipeline may originate in Alberta, but to get the oil to overseas markets, it must travel through B.C. And Premier Christy Clark isn't happy with the money flowing into B.C. coffers as oil flows into an estimated 200 tankers a year destined for overseas. And I see the oil sands as a national asset. So it's good for Canada. It's great for Alberta. Where's the benefit for British Columbia? BC introduced its need for more money to balance the risks associated with the Enbridge pipeline yesterday. Other requirements to gain the province's approval include higher remediation spill standards for marine and land. Reaction from Alberta, fast and furious, vowing not to give up any of its oil royalties. We have in our provinces uh, the right to uh, resources, uh, the income from resources. We have a confederation which allows for people in each province to benefit from the resources that they have to retain jurisdiction over those resources and then to be part of a federal system that allows for transfer payments where there is economic success and those benefits get transferred across the country. That's been the success of Canada. Premier Clark believes BC's requirement should come as no surprise. So our position hasn't changed in this. It's been consistent throughout. What we're doing, though, is we're adding more, more uh, detail to it. Clark and Redford face each other tomorrow when Canada's premiers meet in Halifax, both advancing a case for economic growth, but from two totally different positions. Stephen Andrew joins us live with more on the story. Stephen, the premiers are meeting in Halifax. Will this issue, the way it's building, likely receive a lot of attention? Well, Andrew, I mean, the premiers will not want this uh, item to push other issues off the table, such as health care funding, but they will be watching this issue very closely because the fear here is that BC is asking, essentially asking, for a share of profits from Alberta's natural resources. Now, that's going to be a non-starter, but it has implications for every province, including British Columbia. The question will be if the two premiers, Claude, and Redford can come up with some kind of arrangement, but it will have to be an agreement that uh, doesn't see either leader lose some face on this. All right. Thanks, Stephen. You're welcome. CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. Good evening, I'm Andrew Johnson. Hudson Mack is off tonight. Thanks for joining us. The motorcycle rider accused of racing up the Trans-Canada Highway at nearly 300 kilometers an hour, weaving in and out of traffic at breakneck speeds, is now facing the slow wheels of the justice system. Sanish police say after months of searching for the suspected reckless rider, he has turned himself in, surrendering to Kelowna RCMP. CTV's Louise Hartland has the story. <laughs> It is a video that's left many speechless. Three months after this jaw-dropping road race surfaced on YouTube, Saanich police are saying the words many have longed to hear. Randy Scott has turned himself in. He, at present, is in the custody of the Kelowna RCMP detachment. 
Last night, just before 7, the man police allege was behind the handlebars of the Yamaha R1, weaving in and out of traffic at speeds close to 300 kilometers an hour, walked into the Kelowna RCMP headquarters and turned himself in. Mr. Randy Scott attended the front counter of the Kelowna RCMP and uh, identified himself and uh, advised that he had a, an outstanding warrant. Uh, from Sandwich Police Department uh, for a uh, dangerous operation of a motor vehicle. Today, 25-year-old Randy Scott appeared in a Kelowna courthouse, charged with one count of dangerous operation of a motor vehicle. Last month, a warrant was issued for Scott's arrest. It's likely that uh, the uh, attention that was drawn to this particular uh, incident and to Mr. Scott himself has, uh, has led to him turning himself in. Although you cannot see who is driving the reckless bike, Saanich police are confident they have enough evidence to prove Scott was at the helm. We would not have satisfied the requirements to get to this stage uh, if there wasn't uh, a degree of comfort in what we're saying is accurate. There's a, at least three specific witnesses that will bring uh, information forward uh, that will come out in court. But this lawyer who specializes in criminal traffic cases involving motorcycles is not so sure. I, on the basis of the video evidence alone, it would be really problematic. Um, I've heard that the police have witnesses that can link the action to a specific time, a specific location, and a specific person. So then it's a, just a garden variety uh, case involving uh, excess speed and, uh, and dangerous driving. Randy Scott was released on bail this afternoon in Kelowna. He is not allowed to be behind the wheel of any vehicle, including a motorcycle. He will appear in a Victoria courtroom August 16th. Louise Hartland joins us now live with more on the story. Louise, more than a million people have viewed the video of the motorcycle racing down the highway. Did that help or hurt the police investigation? Andrew Sanich police say they were at a loss to figure out who was riding the bike when the video first surfaced, but credit the public and the tips that came in with charging the alleged rider. We understand Scott is still in a cell in Kelowna right now. He is required to post $500 cash bail before he is released and have a responsible adult sign a $2,000 assurity for him. He must also provide his bail supervisor with an address he cannot change before he appears in court here next month. All right, thanks for the update. You're welcome.